here today with Curtis Christopher, Gardens Manager of the Victoria Butterfly Garden. Hi. Oh, hi Curtis, thanks for inviting us here today. My pleasure. As you can see, here you'll find butterflies, lots of trumpet birds, and pretty rich plants. Hi, we're back in the inner sanctum of the Victoria Butterfly Gardens with Curtis Christopher. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the Butterfly Gardens. Thank you, Curtis. I understand that you are responsible for creating this miniature bog. Yeah. There are some very special plants that we're right. about to learn about. That's right. We have uh, we formed a carnivorous plant bog for temperate and tropical miniature plants from all over the world. What do people know about carnivorous plants? Uh, well, there's a lot of misconceptions about carnivorous plants. There was a movie, right? That's right. <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. So what was that plant in the movie? I remember it being quite... Um, Blood person, shall we say? That's right. It was uh, supposed to be a giant version of the Venus flytrap, oh, which say. obviously there's no carnivorous plants in the world that are that large or dangerous to humans. Okay. Okay. Definitely. So what makes a plant carnivorous? Well, it's okay. just like anything in the world that's carnivorous. Mm -hmm. They kill and eat stuff. Okay. How do they go about that? Well, it depends on the type of carnivorous plant. So if you want to take a look at a few of the different kinds, I'd love to show you how to do that. What's this one here? This is one of the tropical fish plants. This is a species Borneo. So this is in the genus Nepenthes. And this is one of the largest fish plants. These get huge. Believe it or not, this is just a young juvenile cutting. It's just starting to make its pictures. And the neat thing about these is um, they attack insects, all sorts of different living things, even small monkeys, rats, frogs, birds. And they attract them, all the different carnivorous plants attract them in different ways. Mainly for these is scent. They make they have a sugar secretion under their lip, and also they have other dead things inside them, so other predators are interested. When uh, the prey lands on it or crawls on it, they look down into the picture. We're often hypnotized by the different marking and spots on the inside, and they fall into it. Inside this is a digestive liquid which the plant produces. And within shortly a few days, it actually eats and consumes the living thing. So here we have another one. This is another Asian pitcher plant. It's really beautiful, isn't it? They're, oh, they're gorgeous. What a work of art. Bird. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, they all look a little bit different and have different mechanisms on them. This one actually has little, almost like handlebars for different frogs and stuff to hang on to as they're crawling up before they fall in. Curtis, what types of carnivorous plants can we find in British Columbia? I'd love to show you some right now. This is definitely one of the most dramatic that you see in British Columbia. Yeah. Currently it's native to the northern. And this is a Saracenia purpurea, variety purpurea. A lot of these plants have very big names. So they live in the bogs, different forest areas. They're really neat. Same idea, if you look carefully you can see that it is full of the digestive liquid. Oh, yes. On the top they have the amazing red vein colors and little hair is all going in one direction. Now this is an easy plant, if you're ever growing this in your garden, you can sit there and you can watch flies and wasps land on those red lines and they follow the red line all the way down to the edge of the water where they fall in and then they're consumed. Would you like to see this plant eat? I would love to see it. Alright, <laughs> we just happen to have a little bit of a spore spore here. We yeah. have some beautiful little features okay. here. These are a non-native species. Is there a cockroach? Okay. Interesting. So we don't mind feeding these to the carnivorous plants. As you can see, they'll land up. They'll normally, he doesn't want to do it right now, so I'll help him out. He lands on the little hairs and he slips down in. Notice that he tries to climb to get out. Very little luck. As he struggles, he goes farther and farther down. He's now in the liquid. The enzymes take him out pretty fast. You want to see something interesting here? We can actually cut open a pitcher plant. So this is one of last year's pitchers. This one actually grew in my garden outside. So in the wild, you can kind of picture how it would be standing up. Beautiful when they're not dried up. And they eat all season long. So let's cut this one open. There we go. Hundreds. I can see wasps, ants. Beetles, there's a great big wasp. Definitely don't mind at my place when they take out the wasp. And its last few days, I had it in the greenhouse here and you can see its last few meals were cockroaches. Interesting. They all look very dehydrated, but you can see the leftover exoskeletons. That is fascinating. That's a delicacy smorgasbord for a pitcher plant. This we're gonna be 
looking at uh, Sundew, which is a native to British Columbia as well, and it's a carnivorous plant. One of the, it's not as dramatic, but it's still just as dangerous as many other very tiny insects. They look almost like a little starburst. They all have a pad with little sticky droplets of an enzyme on it, which insects are attracted to. They get stuck on the pad, and then the plant at nighttime it rolls up, digests it, and eats it. Carnivorous plants turn to our spring 2011 issue of Fresh Plant Magazine.